Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass, and in today's video we are checking out my first ever drone. This is the Ruko F11 GIM 2. Now, spoiler alert, it's not perfect, but it got me thinking. Let's take a look. So before we get into the flight test and exactly how good or not so good the footage looks, we need to do an unboxing. Also keep in mind that currently this drone comes in at around $579 on the Roku website directly or around £424 here in the UK from Amazon. It can also be found on sale regularly for around $393. So first up we have the user manual and of course with a drone I would definitely recommend reading through this along with checking the drone flight rules in your area. Now for me, I did actually have to pay around 10 to 20 pounds here in the UK just to go over a couple of tests to allow me to actually fly this in the UK legally. Now, yes, you can do it. However, sometimes if you do fly a drone where you shouldn't be, it can come with some hefty fines. Next up, we have some spare rotor blades. Now, from what I can see online with most drones, one of the first things to go is the blades. So it's great that we have some spares here. We have some spare hardware and an allen key to remove parts like the blades and also the arms if anything goes wrong and you were to crash the drone. Next up we have two USB-C to USB-A cables. Now this is due to the fact that you have a charger on the drone and also a secondary one on the controller itself. So this does mean that you do need to get a charger with multiple outlets which may be quite handy to have or you can just use multiple chargers or multiple cables to charge exactly what you need to. You do also get a spare battery with the GIM too. Now this does mean that if both are charged you're going to get double the flight time without having to wait for one battery to charge each and every time and you can also find different parts available on the Roku website directly so if you do for example break the drone and one of the arms falls off you can get a secondary one directly from their website or occasionally you can find them on Amazon for a little bit less money then of course we have the controller and you have everything that you need to get your drone into the air multiple buttons and controls up top which allows for video recording photo taking zooming and of course maneuvering the drone itself with the joysticks and they do feel extremely sturdy from what i can tell they are actually a metal design they've got loads of tactility on the top here as well so in regards to you know driving and moving and flying the actual drone itself hopefully the controls hold up well but again we'll find that when we get to the flight side of things then finally we have the f11 gim 2 drone this is such a compact form factor when folded flat and with the arms in even once everything is out and ready to fly, it's still very nice and small overall for the package. Now, of course, with the GIM2 name, you can expect it to have some good stabilization. Now, this one here has two axis stabilization and up to 4K video recording, which is great to see on what is actually kind of a budget drone option. Keep in mind though that without an SD card on board and recording to the phone only, it is limited to 720p at 30 frames a second. Now it would be nice to see a little bit of a middle ground at 1080p, but at least you've got 4K here. It also comes with EIS or electronic image stabilization. However, don't forget a micro SD card because that's the only way to get 4K video recording on this drone. If you don't have an SD card in there, it will still actually fly and it will still take videos and photos, but the quality will be way, way less than what you would expect with this kind of price on the drone itself. The drone also comes with multiple options for follow me, waypoints, circle flight and gesture shoot modes. This makes it great for outdoor sports like running, climbing and cycling along for hands-free control. But of course we'll get onto that more with the video quality in a moment. Now it won't matter too much because the drone itself is always pretty much going to be in the air but the actual build quality of the drone is extremely good. You have the fold out arms and the blades at the end and that's basically all drones. It looks very much like a clone of something from DJI which is definitely not a bad thing. It's not too heavy and overall build quality is actually super nice. Now yes it is a totally plastic build but overall it feels sturdy and can hopefully withstand a bash or two depending on your flight skills. But hopefully with all the different modes on board, you're not going to be crashing it anytime soon. So overall the build is nice and the camera on paper seems to hold up. So let's get this thing in the air. We're going to see how it controls and how the overall footage is looking. Now of course for me, like I mentioned, I do have an SD card in there. So it's going to be 4K at 30 frames a second. So let's take a look. Now for me, the video quality on the GIM2 is actually pretty good overall. Now don't get me wrong, it's not going to give you that sort of 4K resolution that you're going to get from one of the more expensive thousand plus pound drones, but in general I think it's a pretty good job when you take into consideration the overall price. Now yes, the footage itself is a little bit grainy, and if you do zoom in it definitely loses that quality. For me, yes it is 4K in resolution, but the bitrate definitely suffers overall. Sometimes there's a very slight colour shift depending on the lighting condition. For me, as you can see here, it was around 5 or 6 p.m. in the evening, and overall, I think it actually is quite nice color wise, if not maybe a little bit oversaturated, but of course, you can edit that in your editing software of choice. 
And actually maneuvering and flying the drone was super easy to do. If you've ever played any first person shooter like Battlefield for example and you've flown a helicopter, then you're pretty much going to feel right at home with this particular drone. Maneuvering the drone up, down, left and right and strafing from side to side, 360, whatever you need to do, it was extremely responsive. As soon as you move the joystick, the drone itself is going to start to move. Now yes, there's a little bit of give because it doesn't move sort of instantly because that would make it maybe a little bit too responsive, which I know sounds strange, but on a drone, that's not necessarily what you want to get that extreme flight control, but overall the control system is extremely good. Now of course at the top you do also have buttons for recording video, taking photos, zooming in and also panning the camera up and down and that's unfortunately where this drone falls short when you do pan the camera down the colors just definitely just kind of leave the screen as you can see here when i'm up in the sky looking at sort of the horizon the colors themselves look pretty good overall as soon as i point the drone down to actually got sort of an aerial shot looking downwards it looks very washed out and the colors just don't look great now of course you do then have the option to take photos with this drone as well and the pictures come out pretty good. As you can see here, it kind of gives that really wide panoramic view because again, you're super high up, the drone itself has a really wide field of view on the camera and they look pretty good. If you want to use them on a wallpaper on your computer for example or even print them out depending on where you're taking footage, then again, they're going to hold up pretty well overall. I'm going to try and link these exact photos in the description down below because obviously when I upload videos and photos to YouTube, it does kind of compress them ever so slightly. So if you guys want to get a really good feel for the footage and the photography of this drone, then again, I'll try and link it in the description down below. And I could also go on for hours in regards to the different modes that you get with this particular drone. Whether you want it to follow you, to circle an object, to track something, you have got loads of options available. So what I'm going to do is link in the description below the Roku website, where it has basically tutorial videos for each of the different modes, so you guys can see exactly what this drone can do. For me, this video is more about how the drone feels, looks and flies, and the overall video quality, not necessarily a granular in-depth look at all of the features that you can get. But keep in mind, again, the price of this drone is a pretty good package overall. And that's going to do it guys on the F11 GIM2 from Roku. Now like I mentioned at the start of this video, I did mention the fact that this isn't the most perfect drone, but it did get me thinking. And what I mean by that is I really enjoyed flying this drone, and I may be looking at getting something a little bit more premium moving forward, but this is a great starting point. You've also got loads of options when it comes to income with drones as well. You can go up in the sky, take some stock footage, throw it up on a website, and you may even get paid for it. So again, if that's something that you guys may be interested in, I'll try and link some options down below in regards to some websites where you can host that kind of footage. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. If you've got any questions or comments about this drone that I didn't mention in the video, let me know in the comment section down below also. If you're not already subscribed, now's a great time to do so. And of course, once you've hit that subscribe button, don't forget to turn on notifications so you're notified any time I post a video here on the channel. I'm Michael from Copper vs Glass, and a little bit of a spoiler, I may have some more electric tech coming up soon in regards to transportation. So, I'll catch you guys in the next video.